Hey everybody, I'm Dave with Growing the Home Garden. Today I wanted to show you the difference between two coleus cuttings that I did. One used rooting hormone and the other did not. So sometimes you wonder if you're doing plant propagation, do you actually need to use rooting hormone? For a lot of plants you don't, but there could be some differences. So I have not actually looked at these coleus cuttings yet. Uh, I feel like they're both rooted and they've been given a little bit over a week or so to actually root, so they should not have any trouble uh, rooting in that period of time. But what I'm curious about is what is the difference? Are there any differences at all with the rooting hormone cutting and the one that isn't? So let's take a look here. Now here's the little tray I did. And as you can see here, let me turn it to a good way. We've got these two cuttings here, and I marked the one that I did not use rooting hormone here with this little tag. So this one, and this one, and both have made it so far. You'll see some other cuttings. Those are some hydrangeas and things that I just did all in the same container. And you can see the video. I'll pop that up here in a second so you can go back and watch. We actually have got some lantana in there as well, which has rooted, but the roots are not as big as I want them to be, so I'm going to leave them in a little bit longer. And then, you know, there's a hydrangea that's kind of... Anyway, so I'm getting aside the point. But let's take a look at these coleus cuttings. Now here's the one with rooting hormone, here's the one without rooting hormone. So let's take the one without rooting hormone out first and let's check it. There we go. So we've got some really good rooting. Uh, we've got kind of a little ball of sand around it. And you can see quite a bit of roots just kind of, try to focus that a little bit better, just kind of gathered around the end of that cutting. So it is ready to pot up into a small pot of some kind. Now here is the one with rooting hormone. Wow, okay, it's a little tighter, pulling it out of the sand. And let's put them side by side. So it feels like to me that the rooting hormone one may have a slight advantage over the non-rooting hormone one. This one had no rooting hormone, this one had rooting hormone. So it looks like here that you can see a difference. This probably just rooted a little bit sooner than what this one did. They were both taken exactly the same way from exactly the same type of coleus. Uh, and you can tell they both were successful, but the rooting hormone was a little bit more successful. Now that doesn't mean you should use rooting hormone or you shouldn't use rooting hormone. It's just whatever you happen to have around. Uh, if you happen to be somewhere where you can pick up some and use, you might want to try it. Uh, you can use an alternative like using willow water or something like that to water your cuttings with, in which case that may induce some extra rooting to happen just kind of the same way. So there's a little bit of a comparison. And I'm going to take these now and I'm going to put them up into some pots so that they can grow on a little bit longer. My goal for these two cuttings is to save them for fall, let them grow on nice and large, and then I'll bring them indoors. I'm going to keep them in pots so that I can grow these back over the winter. And that's a good technique. If you're doing rooting of any kind, like uh, for coleus or annuals that could potentially go for a long time, you can do cuttings at, toward the end of the season, bring them indoors, root them. I would want to root them early enough that you have plenty of time to actually get them rooted and get them established. Because if they don't, then you're going to want to maybe take another set of cuttings. So you can bring them indoors, and then in the springtime, you can start taking cuttings from them and plant out in your garden. Coleus is excellent for that. It is probably one of my favorite little annuals that is really just a tender perennial and it will continue to grow for years and years and years as long as you continue the cycle of taking cuttings from it. So, and it's pretty easy to root. All kinds of them will root just the same way, just nice and easy. You can do that with your annual salvias, and I've even done it with peppers from the vegetable garden. So if you have like a jalapeno you really like, which I do, uh, you bring that indoors for the winter time, and you might get a little bit of harvest over the winter, but the main goal is to get your, your jalapeno peppers started early for the next year. So once that frost date hits, you've already got an established plant you can go out and put in the garden. I'll do a video on that a little bit later on the pepper cuttings, but uh, they root very well. Um, so anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little short video on coleus with rooting hormone and coleus without rooting hormone. Uh, I think overall, I would just stick it without the rooting hormone because I can kind of root them faster that way or stick them faster and get more cuttings that way and I don't have to use a product that I've got to go pay for. Uh, but you know, if you're concerned about it and you want to make sure that you're getting good rooting out of something, use the rooting hormone. So choice is up to you. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe and follow us right here or you can follow my blog at growingthehomegarden.com. Thanks for watching.